Welcome to Lesson 9C, Introduction to Pump Performance. In this lesson, we'll discuss some pump terminology. We'll look at the differences between positive displacement pumps and dynamic pumps, review some other pump terms, introduce pump performance curves qualitatively, and do some example problems. First, the introduction and terminology. Pump is a general term used for any device that adds mechanical energy to a fluid. For liquids, we call them pumps, but for gases, we usually call them fans, blowers, or compressors, depending on pressure rise and volume flow rate. In general, a fan has low pressure rise but high volume flow rate, a blower has medium of both, and a compressor has high pressure rise with low volume flow rate. Now let's talk about the distinction between the two basic types of pump, positive displacement pumps and dynamic pumps. PDPs are pumps where fluid is sucked into a closed volume and then the fluid is pushed out. Dynamic pumps, on the other hand, have no closed volume. Instead, they have rotating blades, called impeller blades, that supply energy to the fluid. We'll discuss positive displacement pumps, or PDPs, first. Your heart is a great example of a PDP. Blood is sucked into the left and right ventricles as they expand, and there are valves that open and close as necessary. And then when these muscles contract, blood is pushed out, either into the pulmonary artery or the aorta. Again, there are valves that open and close appropriately. Engineers have designed artificial hearts that are also PDPs. Here's an example of one that uses compressed air. Air comes in externally. When air is pumped into this bladder, it pushes blood out. And when the air is sucked out of the bladder, it draws in. There are mechanical valves that replace the natural valves in the heart. This is similar to a bellows that you can use to blow air on a fire. There are many other examples of positive displacement pump designs. Bicycle pump tire is one kind for compression of air. And an old-fashioned water pump is another of PDP for an incompressible liquid like water. There are various other designs of pumps that are positive displacement pumps. This one's called a peristaltic pump. It uses little wheels to flatten out a plastic tube, and this chunk of liquid gets expelled out from the pump. This is a three-lobe rotary pump, where again, fluid is drawn in into some kind of a closed volume and then pushed out. A gear pump or a double screw pump perform similarly, where the fluid is drawn into these little volumes and then expelled. It's actually very simple to predict the volume flow rate of a PDP. Let's consider a simple two-lobe rotary pump. We define the volume of one of these lobes as this pink fluid here or this blue fluid here. This part spins counterclockwise. This part spins clockwise. And we can easily analyze how this draws the fluid in and pushes it out. We drew this in our textbook to illustrate at four different angles of these rotating shafts. As this shaft spins this way, it draws the blue water into this lobe and then continues around and it stops at the top at 180 degrees. Meanwhile, the pink fluid has already been drawn in and as this spins counterclockwise, it pushes that volume out. You can see that this volume is the next one to be pushed out. In this manner, it pushes out some red fluid and some blue fluid and some more red fluid coming from here, etc. For a given rotation rate, which we call n dot in RPM of the pump shaft, we can calculate the volume flow rate assuming there's no leakage through these small gaps. We illustrate this in the following example problem from our textbook. A two-lobe rotary positive displacement pump, similar to what we just shown, moves this volume of motor oil in each lobe volume V lobe, where from the previous diagram, the volume of this pink fluid is V lobe as is the volume of this blue fluid. Let's calculate the volume flow rate of oil for the case where N dot is 900 RPM. We assume that the flow is steady in the mean, there are no leaks, and the oil is incompressible. If you study this figure and think about it, for half a rotation, 180 degrees, N equals 0.5 rotations, and the total volume pumped out during that time is 2 V lobe, one pink chunk that is just coming out here, and a blue chunk that came out before the blue chunk that we're drawing here. In other words, here, here, and here, that blue chunk has gone through. So a volume of 2 V lobe is pushed out in half a rotation. Once we figure that out, the volume flow rate is N dot, what we call V closed, two lobe volumes, over the number of rotations. In our case, 900 rotations per minute is N dot. Two times V lobe are discharged per half a rotation. And this gives us 1620 cubic centimeters per minute. If there were leaks in the pump, the volume flow rate would be lower. And notice that density never appeared in the analysis. However, the higher the fluid density, the higher the required shaft torque and brake horsepower push that fluid through. 
if you think in terms of dimensions like I like to do. N dot has dimensions of rotation per time, where rotation is really a non-dimensional quantity. V closed is a volume, and N is the number of rotations, which gives us volume per time, or volume flow rate, as we also show with units. The other main type of pump, or classification of pump, is dynamic pump. Dynamic pumps do not have closed volumes. Instead, they have a spinning impeller blade, or rotor blade, that transfers kinetic energy and momentum to the fluid. There's three main types of dynamic pumps, centrifugal, axial, and mixed flow. These are sketched here. For a centrifugal flow pump, fluid enters axially and discharges radially. For an axial flow pump, the flow comes in axially and discharges axially in the same direction. Your standard house fan is of this type. And then mixed flow pumps have fluid entering in axially but discharging at some angle between axial and radial. Of these, centrifugal pumps are the most common and are recognized by their scrolled snail-like casing. Here's some typical centrifugal air blowers with their characteristic snail shaped scroll. The water pump in your car is typically like this, but for water. Here are front and side views of a typical centrifugal pump. These have backward inclined blades. In some other designs, the blades are straight or even forward inclined. With a PDP, we had these closed volumes and we easily calculated the flow rate. For a dynamic pump, it's much more difficult. We have to use equations of conservation of mass and angular momentum to analyze the flow and the performance of the pump. Now I'll do a quick review of pump efficiency and some other terms. Pump efficiency, eta pump, is defined as the useful power delivered to the fluid divided by the shaft power required to run the pump. And recall that we called these water horsepower and brake horsepower, respectively. We express the useful power delivered to the fluid in terms of the useful pump head, H pump, comma U, and the water horsepower is M dot G times H pump U. In turbo machinery, we often use capital H as the net head of the pump, but it's the same thing as what we're used to calling H pump U. So we have this equation for eta pump as well, where we use capital H instead of H pump U, and M dot is rho V dot. This is the form we'll use most often. Eta pump is rho V dot G capital H over the brake horsepower, which is the shaft power required to run the pump. Often these pumps are attached directly to a motor, and we don't really care about the shaft power, but rather the electrical power to run the pump. So we write eta pump motor, which includes the motor inefficiencies as well. So eta pump motor is rho V dot GH over the electrical power required to run the pump. As for all efficiencies, we have a useful output divided by the required input. In either of these cases, there are two ways for A to pump to be zero. Just looking at the numerator, if V dot is equal to zero, in other words, there's no flow, or H equals zero, in other words, there's no head. This leads us to the pump performance curves. And we'll do a short demo with a small axial flow fan and a dryer exhaust duct to illustrate a pump, in this case a fan, performance curve. I'll set up our axes. The horizontal axis is volume flow rate, and the vertical axis is net head. You could also use pressure there, the pressure rise across the pump or the fan. Now let's do the demo. If this fan is not connected to any kind of pipe and it's running, it's not doing any useful work on the pipe system. When the head is zero and there's a large volume flow rate, our pump performance is at this point. In other words, V dot is a maximum when H is zero. People call that the free delivery point. Now think about what happens if we get a book, pick a good book like this, and we block off the exit. Now what's happening? Well, the fan's spinning like crazy, but it's not doing any useful work because there's no volume flow rate. The pressure inside this pipe is higher than atmospheric, but the flow is stagnant, so the efficiency is zero. On the opposite extreme, when volume flow rate is zero, we get a maximum head. H max is called the shutoff head because it's the head that you get when you shut off the flow with a valve or if you block it somehow, as we did with the book in our demo. If we connect it to a pipe system, it's now doing some work and has some volume flow rate, and then there's some efficiency for the fan. There's a head loss through this pipe, or in terms of a fan, it's a pressure drop. We can vary the head we can make that pressure drop smaller by making the pipe smaller length. And the curve typically looks like this, where it starts at H max, the shutoff head when there's no flow rate, and head decreases all the way to zero at the maximum flow rate or the free delivery. 
At either of these extremes, the efficiency is zero because as I pointed out, eta has both h and v dot in the numerator. So if either of these is zero, our efficiency is zero. And the efficiency curve typically looks like that. The blue curve is the head curve and the red curve is the efficiency curve. Some length of the pipe, there will be a maximum efficiency point where we get both a head loss and a volume flow rate. You see that somewhere in here we get a maximum efficiency. This volume is V dot BEP, and this head is H BEP, where BEP stands for best efficiency point. And I added this comment, H equal max when V dot is zero, to go along with this comment I had made earlier, V dot is max when H equals zero. But somewhere in between these two extremes is the best efficiency point, where we have a decent head and a decent volume flow rate. But V dot BEP is below the free delivery, and H BEP is below the shutoff head. These are just qualitative curves, but I'm plotting h and eta on the same plot. They, of course, have very different units. Eta is dimensionless, while h has dimensions of head or length. We can also plot the brake horsepower, or if it's a pump motor combination, w dot electric, which is non-zero even when there's no flow, and generally just moves up slowly like this. The maximum efficiency point does not occur at the point of lowest brake horsepower, or w dot electric, but it's somewhere out here. This point has the lowest power consumption, but you're not providing any useful movement in the pipe because the flow rate is zero. I'll do another quick example. James buys a water pump. The specifications on the box say that the maximum head is 30 meters of water, and the maximum flow rate is 30 liters per minute. Which of the following choices is most likely to be the actual pump performance? I'll sketch H versus V dot, where H is in meters, and V dot is in liters per minute. I also sketch some grid lines. Point A has H and V dot both equal to 30. That's this point. Point B has H equal 30 and V dot is 20. That's this point. And we plot the other points as well. This is point C, point D, point E, and point F. We know that the pump performance curve has a shape that looks something like this. So these two can't be correct. If D or F were correct, the curve would be linear. And if C were correct, the curve would be inverted like that. Only this top one is the correct shape. And this is only qualitative, but E is closest to that curve. It makes the most sense. So E is the correct answer. The point of this exercise is to show you that you need to beware of these specifications. Pump manufacturers like to quote their maximum head and their maximum flow rate, but you can't get both at the same time. When you have maximum flow rate, you have zero head, which is useless. When you have maximum head, you have zero flow rate, which is also useless. In actual operation of a pump, you're along this curve, and point E has H lower than max and V dot lower than max. But that's closest to the operating curve. In a later lesson, we'll show how to apply the pump performance curve in a pipe system to predict the flow rate at which the pipe system will operate. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.